What is a good beach volleyball set? What's up? I'm Alex from LearnBeachVolleyFast.com and in this video I'm sort of going to try to answer that question. Because in reality that question is a very complex one because there's a lot of different qualities about beach volleyball setting that can all influence what is a good set. There's, there's form, there's technique, there's, uh, there's location on the court, there's readability for your partner, etc. etc. and we're not going to touch on all of that. But we're going to talk about setting location and a small little detail that a lot of beginner players miss that I think can help their game a lot in not too much time at all. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. So basically, this is the beach volleyball court from two different directions. This is top view, and this is a side view, Super Mario kind of 2D view. Uh, I believe that most players think about the set location in terms of this top view, on where on the court it is, sideways, how far from the net, etc. And that's basically the, what setting location means. But I'm gonna talk about another thing, which is the, basically the height of the set on the court from this view. And even more specifically, the consistency of the height of your sets. So just before I get started here, I have to say that this is based on how I like to hit and how I like to have my sets. And that's not gonna be true for every player at every time. But bear with me and uh, you'll get the point of what I'm trying to say here. So <clears throat> this location here, the sideways location and how far from the net you set, they are important factors of the setting location. However, as long as this player here that's going to hit these balls can take a proper approach with, with all of his or her steps uh, in a relaxed mode without being stressed, etc., knowing sort of the tempo of the ball, this player can usually adapt to, to situ situations. They can get outside, they can get in the middle, they can get inside. They can even hit balls that are further off the net or get closer to the net if they need to, etc, etc. And this ability is based on the player being able to have sort of a consistent routine in their approach, in their steps, four, three, five, however step, many steps you take in your approach, to have sort of that uh, trust on their setter that they can keep the same tempo as they usually are used to. So what is it then that I see in, in a lot of lower level players? Well, I see a lot of focus on this location here and people saying, oh, that was a good set or that was a bad set or was that a good set etc depending based on the position where the ball goes but they completely neglect the height of the set which means that sometimes they set very low and sometimes they set very high and it's kind of back and forth and and <laughs> in the worst case it's like every second ball is very low and, and every second is very high and you as a hitter it's just impossible I'm never gonna say, I shouldn't say impossible, but it's very, very difficult to find your rhythm in the approach because you, you can't really develop a trust in the setter. But what happens if the setter actually starts setting consistently roughly the same height on, on every set that they, that they do? Well, then <laughs> this player is gonna be able to develop their rhythm, their approach, and sort of be able to trust the player. Of course, on top of that, in the perfect world, the set would also be consistent in location. But what I'm saying is that that's just not as important as the setting rhythm. So if we now have three variables, which one is the setting height consistency, one is the uh, distance of the net, and one is the distance this way, sideways on the net, I would say that they are prioritized in this order. So consistency, distance and uh, sideways which means that for me the most important thing is that the setting height is is sort of the same all the time after that it's easier to fix sideways balls than distance from the net balls so 
the second most important thing would be to have sort of the right distance from the net or the one that I that I expect it to be and the last the least important is the sideways thing because that's the easiest way you can adapt with your approach another little detail is the setting actual height so not the consistency of the height but you can, so you can be consistently low or you can be consistently somewhere in the middle or you can be consistently high and again in my opinion this matters and this is different players are gonna have different preferences depending on their hitting style and etc etc their attacking style basically but what I found is that as long as my setter is consistent with their height I can usually adapt also to different types of sets because I can just start my approach earlier or start my approach later as long as I know that with this setter I can do that every single time side note time so a lot of the times a lot of people really 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 want to learn attacking in beach volleyball but they're at a level where no one in the group is aware of this and no one can set a consistent height and the thing is that even good hitters really have trouble hitting well if the set height is inconsistent usually therefore i'm more and more starting to really push this onto these groups like yes we will work on attacking but we have to get consistent setting height first and um, and then we can work on hitting and um, usually it doesn't take too much work to make this happen and then the hitting practice gets so much more efficient afterwards okay end of side note so two more important points is one of them is that this what i just said is sort of a semi truth and semi <laughs> it's not always true and that is when the receiver does a bad pass so that the setter has to set from far off the net far off the net rather than getting a good pass there so that the, the set is kind of easy in those cases you are most probably want to set a little bit higher than usual so actually the consistency that I'm asking for is more of a tempo consistency rather than an absolute height consistency. Um, I won't go into further into that in this video, but just so it's said, the consistency of the height might not be exactly true if, uh, if it's a bad pass and a far off the net set. The other important thing is that this might not be true for all attackers, as I said. Uh, there might be other variables that might be more important for you. There might be other variables that might be important for some partner that you're going to play with in the future, etc., etc. However, I do think it's a good exercise to think about this. What is important for my sets that I'm going to attack from? What is important for my partner's sets? Have the discussion with your partner. Ask them, what do you care about most? Is it that I show where I put the ball? Is it the location? Is it the height consistency, etc.? And they might not know. And <laughs> well, it might be good for you guys to actually experiment and see what actually gets your partner to be able to trust your setting. But don't get too surprised if you actually end up realizing that hmm, it is the consistency of the height that might be the most important thing. To practice this, to learn this, well, it's quite easy. It's just to start to become aware of the set height when you set, rather than being so focused on the location that you can't think of the set height and the consistency of it. Another thing that <laughs> is quite easy to do at home is you usually have a ceiling at home and you can sort of set towards the ceiling and the ceiling will give you good feedback if you touch it or not. Um, I'm not sure it's the best drill in the world, but it's very easy, very quick to try at home. And it just makes you realize how to be consistent with a setting height. Of course, the ceiling is usually a little bit too low for it to be a realistic uh, beach volleyball set. But anyway, you get the idea. You start to tr practice your brain into thinking that way of being aware of the set height.
cool that was basically it for this video hope it helps you hope it gets you thinking maybe in new ways about setting etc etc now don't take any of this what i'm saying here as absolute truth that like the textbook because in reality it's all very complicated and you could talk about a lot about, about a lot more details about this and sometimes this might not be true etc etc there's playing styles there's um there's all sorts of systems that you could play and shoot sets and whatnot and then all of this is out the window but <laughs> as a general rule uh, i think think of this as me inviting you to start thinking about things in a new way and when you start thinking about things in a new way with some of my suggestions well you might get to your own answers that will then help you with the game so lastly, if this video is giving you value, if it helps you, if you're happy that there's actually someone online talking about this kind of stuff about beach volleyball, the more nerdy stuff, there's a few things you should do to help me grow this project, but the more this project grows, the more I can help you guys too, because the more time and resources and everything I get to make these videos. So there's a few things you should do. You should subscribe to the channel. You should. Um, comment in the comment section below if you have any ideas or thoughts or questions or whatever that actually also helps me <laughs> you should join my email list uh, there's a lot of good things about that because um, well the email list subscribers get to know about important updates about this project the, the first there's also I have a Facebook group that you can join where you can join discussions with me and me and other followers of this project and lastly but maybe most importantly share this video and this project to your friends because that's really, that's the way more people get to know about this and the numbers will get bigger and I will be able to create a lot more content and videos and uh, help you guys way more. Oh yeah, one more thing. I have a lot more videos on setting on this YouTube channel about uh, technique and how to learn it, etc., etc., which we haven't discussed in this video. If you're interested in that, you will find those videos in this playlist. All right, that's it. Have a good day and I hope I'll see you later.